Joining me now is John R. Lott Jr. He is president of Crime Prevention Research Center. And he does not believe in federal background checks. And he has written books such as The War on Guns, which is a hilarious title. Uh, and more guns, less crime. That seems to be the exact opposite of what reality is, uh, as well as the bias against guns. So, uh, John, welcome to the show. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, Thanks. Uh, Thanks. I got my views quite right on background checks. My concern is just with the way the system is set up that it mainly discriminates against poor minority individuals. Mm. And yeah. they could be easily fixed. But it concerns me given that my work shows that it's basically poor minorities who live in high crime urban areas who benefit the most from owning guns to have a system that primarily discriminates against those individuals owning them. Okay, so John, that's why you're on here. And obviously, I don't agree with a lot of your suppositions and, and I'm not the kind to hide that. But obviously, we're gonna give you an airing of your views here. And so, let's talk about that issue first, okay, sure. uh, about uh, minority folks. So, uh, are you pushing basically then for socialism for guns, uh, that somehow we should make guns more accessible to poor people? I mean, God forbid we should make healthcare or education more uh, accessible to poor people, but guns we should apparently do. Police can be important in stopping crime, but what happens when somebody's having to face a criminal by themselves? I mean, it'd be great if the police were every place, but they're particularly not every place when you're talking about high crime, urban minority communities. And so the question is, what should people do when they're having to confront a criminal by themselves? And I think the evidence is pretty overwhelming that the safest course of action is to have a gun. The problem is, is that a lot of the regulations that are there make it particularly difficult for those most vulnerable people to be able to go and protect themselves. So. You know, take something like these universal background checks in Washington, D.C., where they're going to be voting on this. Uh, it costs $125 to do a, a private transfer of a gun. Who do they think they're stopping from having those types of fees? You know, or look at the background check system that they have in terms of mistakes. We frequently hear the claim that there are three million dangerous prohibited people that have been stopped from buying guns. But that's simply not true. What they should say is there have been three million initial denials, and virtually all of those are false positives. And unfortunately, it's primarily minorities who are facing overwhelmingly uh, those denials. And it doesn't have to be the case. So, John, when you, uh, go ahead. Yeah, John, I, I will give you credit for this, which is that. Um, you're about the only person I've ever seen arguing uh, that minorities should have more guns. Uh, and we faulted the NRA in the past uh, for not defending people like Philando Castile, who was a law abiding uh, citizen who had his gun in a perfectly legal way and was shot dead by the police. Uh, and so often the NRA has been incredibly silent on those issues. Um, so I, I'll give you credit on that. Uh, I'm not the NRA. I, I have never been. I mm -hmm. spoke out on that issue when it occurred. And. Yeah. Uh, you know, anybody who looks at my work from my earliest work when I was at the University of Chicago knows that I basically find that there's two groups of people who benefit by far the most from having guns. And those tend to be poor minorities who live in high crime urban areas and people who are relatively weaker physically, primarily women. I think mm -hmm. women benefit much more from owning guns than men do. Okay. so. Uh I hear you on that, and like I said, at least you're you're one of the very few voices uh, uh, look in your own way, I suppose, looking out for that community. I don't think that that community or any community having more guns makes them safer. I may I think that it, it makes them far less safe. But before we move on to that topic, let me just uh, quickly ask you: Are you also for Medicare for all? I'm for doing things that make it less expensive for people, and I have no problem with going and helping them out. I don't want to have one government insurance agency there because I don't think when you give somebody a monopoly, whether it's the government or somebody else, they don't have the same incentives to go and improve things over time and make sure that people get the proper care. So if you want to have vouchers to go and help lower income individuals, I'm all for talking about that. I want to make sure that people get health insurance. But I don't want to have one government monopoly going and running things. So in the case of guns, just to be clear, 
what do you want to do for poor people? Just get rid of background checks? No, uh, no I imagine not. not. So what, not what's what your, no, that's okay, that's why I'm asking you. So what, what's your proposal in the case of guns? My proposal is, is that you make it so that, look, as an economist, Basically, what you're taught is that the people who benefit the most from programs should be the ones who pay for them. And in this case, if you believe background checks reduce crime, it would reduce crime for everybody, not just the individual who's buying the gun. And so what you should do is pay for it out of general revenue. If you think this is something beneficial for society that's making society better off, then why make it so that just the poor people are bearing this burden. I'll give you one example. I think Democrats have been very hypocritical about this. Back in a few years ago when Colorado was passing its background checks on private transfers, I got a call from some state legislators asking me what amendment I would put up on the bill. And my suggestion was an amendment that would exempt people below the poverty level from having to pay the new state tax on transferring guns. With the exception of two pro-gun Democrats in the state house there, every other Democrat in the state legislature there voted against exempting people below the poverty level from having to pay the new tax that was there. So that's one thing to do. That would solve the cost problem. Now on the mistake problem, you know, let me give you an example. When companies do background check, criminal background checks on employees, they have to meet certain rules. And the primary rule is that they have to use all the information that's available. And the reason for that is to make sure you don't have false positives. You have, for example, with guns, you have 30% of black males who are legally prohibited from owning guns because of past criminal histories. Well, whose names are their names most likely to be confused with? Other law-abiding black males. And the same thing is true with Hispanics, though to a lesser extent. When you buy a gun and you fill out the form, the 4473, you put down your name, your social security number, your race, your address, you know, your eye color, hair color, you think you're giving them all this information they're using it, your birthday. What they use is roughly phonetically similar names and similar birthdays. And the problem is, is that Hispanics have names similar to other Hispanics. Blacks tend to have black names similar to other blacks. And you're creating a problem there because you're more likely to get the wrong person. And there's no reason for that to happen. All the government has to do is face the same regulations that the government imposes on private companies. All right, John, so let me probe into that too. The reason I brought Medicare for all is because I know that your proposal is to have the government pay for federal background checks, which other Republicans might call socialist. Uh, but, uh, so, but you say if you think background checks save lives, then the government should pay for it. That's the same argument we make in healthcare. Uh, the government should pay for it. I just said I was for a voucher. I just said I was for a voucher. Okay, for all right, so it's a the slightly different way of doing it, but I hear you. And, and so I appreciate that answer. So now let's go and see, whereas other, I believe other Republicans are hypocritical about that, okay? So uh, now. Uh, on the issue of getting the names confused, that is why uh, voter ID laws and voter purges make no sense. Because Latinos and African Americans have similar names more than white people do. So are you uh, against the voter purges that the Republican governors do all the time on that same exact uh, reason? Well, I guess what I would do is use the same type of criteria. Make sure you have complete information on the individuals. Just like we do for criminal background checks for employees. And in order to try to make sure you can stop those types of false positives. If there is a false positive problem in voter IDs, the solution is to include as much information as you can. And, and so the same thing I would say for, I'm consistent in terms of background checks for employees, for background checks for buying guns, and I would say the same thing then for voter IDs. All right, wonderful. So, and I appreciate you being principled on that. Uh, I hope other Republican governors listen to you because they do not include any of that information. They say, if well, I, hope, I hope you can help me because mm -hmm. for 20 years I've been trying to talk to gun control advocates saying you could get universal background checks passed today if they just made two simple changes. If they just made it so that the people who benefit from the background checks are the ones who pay. 
I guarantee you, you bring that up to a gun control advocate, they will go nuts. They will go completely ape over you suggesting that the government pay for background checks. If you bring up the fact of getting rid of these false positives, they will go crazy. I brought this up time after time, and they will fight you tooth and nail against having the government pay yeah, for the background checks. But, but John, I understand why, though. So I'm not saying that I agree with your position. So. Uh, for example, I'm inconsistent. So why is it? No, that no, no. You can be, no. There's we'll two different say. things, John. There's two different things. One is is your position consistent, and the other is do I agree with that position? So, so in the case of the background checks, I think that a lot of the uh, gun control advocates would say uh, you're in a sense subsidizing gun manufacturers when you uh, have the government pay for background checks, and you're saying no, but hey, that's not fair to the poor and middle class. It's an no, interesting argument. Right? The only thing I'm subsidizing is the background check. I'm not subsidizing the purchase of the guns. And so there's there's uh, arguments to be made that people don't want guns to be cheaper. That's part of the problem. There's too many guns in the first place. So th those are different arguments th that are made. On the false positives, I I'm not, look, if you wanna help fix the system, fine. But if you say let's not have a federal background check until it's nearly perfect, then I don't agree at all. I would have the federal background check immediately and look to to work look, on, on fixing the system in, in the ways that you suggest and have an interesting debate about that. No, because they'll put it in and then they'll never fix it. And then you're gonna have a not lot more minorities denied from being able but to But John, stuff. as it stands now, uh, we don't have a federal background check that's nearly comprehensive enough. And all sorts of madmen get guns and murder each uh, our, uh, us nonstop. There's a, a massacre every day in the country because of gun violence. Name me one mass public shooting this century that would have been stopped if background checks on private transfers, these universal background check rules had been in effect. Name me one. There's not one this century that would have been stopped. So you're saying that everyone who committed these massacres, whether it was in Charleston, South Carolina, Sutherland Springs, Texas, Columbine, etc., that they all would have gotten guns anyway because they were perfectly lovely people and 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 the we, we couldn't possibly design a system that could tell if they were mentally that. unstable or had a criminal background, etc. Is that is that I'm the contention? All the universal background check rules that I've seen proposed, every single one of them whether it be under the Obama administration or the new Gabby Giffords bill, the bill that's named after her in the Congress, it wouldn't have stopped her shooter because he didn't get a gun from a private transfer. He bought it from a dealer, he went through a background check and he passed. So, so now, then John, are you for much tighter gun control overall then? Because uh, tighter gun control could, would have prevented a lot of those uh, transactions that didn't go through private uh, dealers. Name me one mass public shooting. Any of the any of the bills that are out there. Name me one of the uh, background check bills that would have stopped any of the mass public shootings this century. There were several different mass shootings, I believe, in, in, including the one that just happened uh, in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, where there was a criminal uh, history and and uh, as the shooter should have been stopped, and they weren't. So now, he didn't have a criminal history because they weren't enforcing the laws there. The so, but John, you seem to have an excuse for all that. The reality is, that way too many people are getting guns, and it's leading to. I mean, I, we got we got to end on this. I wish we had more time. Maybe we'll have you back on, John. But but are you your contention seems to be that more guns keeps us safer? But that's preposterous based on the evidence. No, it's not true. You you. Name me one country, name me one place in the world that's banned guns, either all guns or all handguns, and the murder rate's gone down. Just name me one. Well, okay, every, so, so no, 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 yeah, it's gone up. John, John, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Let's just be absolutely clear. Uh, right. So Japan has very tight gun control. They have 13 people that died from guns in an average year. Did we have 30,000. They, our population is four times their size. You no, can do the math on that. Australia, but hold on, you asked me a question, I'm answering it. Australia not, banned uh, uh, weapons and then bought them back. They haven't had a single mass shooting since. And we have one mass shooting every single day in America. And I could go on and on. To, to say that there is equal amount of uh, homicides per capita in Japan, Britain, Australia as in America would be the most preposterous and counterfactual statement you could make. what I said. I said name me one place where they banned it and went from whatever it was before to having a lower homicide rate afterwards. Japan has had gun control laws that have been very restrictive since the 1700s, 
Okay. So, but she you did. understand the irony of your statement, John? You're saying since Japan did it right all along, and they always did gun no. control. Uh, that's that doesn't count it, it, because they did gun control. They've been terrific, and they don't. Ha they hardly have any gun murders at all, or and no. their homicides rates are way lower than us. But no, that no. doesn't count because they didn't change their laws. I'm saying as far back, even before they had gun control laws, as far as we can tell, Japan's always had an extremely low homicide rate. Look at Britain, okay? Britain's had a very low you homicide think, John, do you really think it's a coincidence that all the countries that uh, tightly regulate guns have a way lower homicide rate than America? If and it's just a wonderful coincidence that it turned out that way. That's not true. If you look across all developed countries or you look across all countries, the countries that have the most guns per capita tend to have lower homicide rates. What usually that's happens- That's not remotely true, John. Now, now, now you lost me. That's not and within if miles of truth. You and I, if you want to talk off the air, well, we have time. I'm happy to show you graphs and diagrams of this. Usually what happens is people leave out a lot of the countries, either developed countries or others, when they're making this comparison. And I can show you the countries that they leave out. Yeah, no, and it's every graph I've ever seen, every factoid exactly. I've ever seen. Here, I'll show you one. I'll look, and we got to go, but. So look at look at the amount of guns that the, the U.S. has. And I hope you can see this, uh, and 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 how many uh, mass shootings we have as compared to the countries uh, that have uh, less guns and have almost no mass shootings. We're off the chart, off the chart. So you can say homicide rates are slightly different, but I can show you similar charts on homicide rates. I can show you similar charts on suicide rates. By the way, and and, and the list goes on to say that hey. All these studies show the same thing, but all those studies somehow left out countries. No, but they're not analysis. all sorts of different studies. What you have to look at, I mean, first of all, I'm talking about refereed studies, okay? But you're, you would take, if you're looking at mass public shootings, I assume you're using the data from Adam Langford. And the problem is he's refused to give out his list of cases. He's refused to tell anybody how he's compiled the list of cases. And when you actually go, we've just spent, $70,000 going through and collecting the cases ourselves. And what we find is he's missed tons of mass public shootings in Europe and the rest of the world. Yeah, if that's, you use the FBI definition no, I, and you go through it, John, you we gotta go. John, you we gotta go. But li listen, it's not one study. I, I've seen and reported on the show of dozens of studies and they all magically left out some countries that you I don't know why you look at all this the countries that we do know of that we did study and it shows less guns equals less homicides every single time and you go somehow that's not the rule cuz you might have left out Botswana and there I found a magical I'm not exception that type of thing. And look again, Australia. Okay, if you look at it, its homicide rates were falling for 15 years prior to the buyback. It continued falling afterwards, but actually, if you look at it at a slower rate, what usually people do is just look at the before and after averages. Besides, they didn't ban guns. By 2010, the gun ownership rate in Australia was higher than it was before the buyback, but. It actually slowed the rate of decline in the homicides when they had the big buyback there. But if you look at any place that's banned all guns or all handguns I, and look before and after the ban, you will not find one country where it's gone down or even stayed the same. Yeah. Every single time it's gone up and often by large amounts, John, even I'm, island nations. Okay, John, I'm gonna give you the last word because I wanna be fair to you. And if I keep responding, you're gonna keep responding and we're way over time. But right. John Lott, uh, President of Crime Prevention Research Center, thank you for joining us for an interesting conversation. Thank you, people can find more at our web website at crimeresearch.org, crimeresearch.org.